Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, welcome to the Investor Show. Coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button, and notifications as you guys are coming in. Um, Tech Soul, uh, hey, how is it going? Voss, what's going on, William Voss? Glad you can join us on the live. And for all the great people that's going to catch this back on the playback, if you ever miss a, miss a live, I know some people say, hey, Prince, I missed a live. Uh, but it's okay because guess what? We have it on iTunes. We have it on iHeartRadio. We, uh, we have it on uh, Google Play. Anywhere you can get a live content here on YouTube, Facebook, you, you always can catch our playbacks. But I know it's not as good as the live experience, but that's okay. But I'm glad you, uh, who's in here today, who's catching it live, and the people that are catching the playback. This is my first time scheduling a uh, live broadcast because I want to kind of get it out there. And I really do like having the conversa conversation with you guys and girls as well. Now, I haven't gotten to the point of scheduling to the point of where, um, you know, I know every Sunday night, I may do something like that every Saturday night at 3, three but currently my schedule, excuse me, currently my schedule is a little all over the place for me to do that, but uh, doing the best I can when I can. So why am I making this video? This video is requested by Mr. Voss, who's uh, tuned in right now. Uh, and it's a question I get asked pretty often. So instead of answering directly to one or two people, I decided to just do a video about it or do a podcast or audio experience about it. So you can go back and it could be people can listen to it over and over uh, for years to come. So, um, First, let's jump straight into it. Let's not waste time. So we're going to go over four steps, and we're going to walk through it. So the people that are catching this live in the playback, I'm going to walk you through it, taking you from zero all the way to hero of being able to find a stock you may buy. Now, so let's get straight into it. So if you have a browser, Google, something like that, you can go with it. So the first step. Now, congratulations, you have started to invest. Good for you, great on you, or whatnot. The first question is, you got to ask yourself, why are you investing? And the only way you're going to be able to figure out why you're investing is to know your number. I always tell people this all the time. Know your number. Prince, what do you mean by my number? What is the reason you're investing? Are you investing for your son to daughter education? Um, one second here. And I'm going to put the comments that come in too. Know your boy, 504 Foster. What's up, Prince? I think he said, a first time catching your live show. Cool, cool, great, great. And, of course, we had our William Voss that said good evening. And Texel said hello. As you come in, um, hit the thumbs up button. Um, Dante, love the show, kid. Appreciate it, uh, Dante Quick. And as you're coming in, catch uh, hit that uh, like button, right? I heard that does good things for the algorithm. <laughs> so what y'all think about my background for today's show? I try to switch it up for every show to kind of make it go on with the show right jay said he he love love your show i appreciate it man appreciate it hit the thumbs up button but we're gonna get down to it tonight right so what i was saying first know your number what is your number your number is um uh lhj19 said what's up fam thanks for your advice no problem d brooks hit the like button it's free that is true what's going on d brooks beef thumbs up the background is fire appreciate it Look all this love I'm getting today. Look all this. Okay. Gary, what's going on, Gary? What's up? <laughs> so thanks for everybody that's tuning in, tuning in. That's why I love I love this uh live show. So I uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it, guys. So, but if you have a question as we're going through this, you're gonna be able to, whatever your question is, I'm gonna pop your question up on the screen and we're gonna talk about it, right? So the first thing is what is your number? What is the whole reason why you're investing? Let's say if I'm investing for my son. He is now eight years old, and my goal is to send him to college for free or whatever. I want him to pay for his entire college. First, I got to figure out how much his college costs. So uh, I can factor in what college costs today, and you can figure out with inflation. Let's say if you know you, you're going to need 60 grand to send your son or daughter to school um, or whatever in 2025 or however the child is. So now you know you need $50,000, and you have – my son is eight years old or he's three, four, five. I have 10 years to get the $50,000. So in order for me to get the $50,000 in 10 years and I'm investing $200 a month, how what rate of return do I need, right? So that right there, 
by knowing your number, you know your number is 50,000. You have 10 years. You know your First, you know your number. Then, now you know your time horizon. So number one, know your number. What is your number? If you're investing for retirement, what is your retirement number? How much money and when do you want to retire? You, you want to retire at 50 and you know you plan on living to 85? You know, hey, I'm 35 years old now. I plan on retiring at 50. That's 15. Ooh, that's only 15 years. Goodness <laughs> So I have 15 years to get to whatever my number is. And when I retire, I want to earn $30,000 a year. Long story short, you can figure out I need $50,000, $400,000, $300,000 or whatnot. The reason why your number is so important, it would be like uh, anywhere, anytime you're planning on going somewhere, you need to know the destination. <clears throat> if you know your destination, you know how much gas you need. You know how fast you need to run. And you know, like, whoa, well, this was just one block over. I was going to walk. But if I got to travel this far, I have to, I need a, um, you know, I need to call an Uber. I need to drive. I need a car. You know, me, um, next uh, uh, next week, I'll be in Georgia, right? That's a 24-hour drive for me. And I'm not driving that. So I know, hey, motor transportation would change. Just like a regular person, I know I need to go to New York City. Or I need to know, I know I need to go to Georgia. I know Georgia's a 24-hour ride. So guess what? I'm not driving. I'm not going to drive that. So. I have to look in the plane option. Same thing with investing. If you know where you're going, if you know your destination, now you got to figure out what vehicles out there can get me to my destination. You know, I did it for a long time where I was just investing to make money. I was just investing to, uh, hey, I want to make some money real quick or whatever. And it was a, not a good idea for me, right? And uh, why it wasn't a good idea, because I was just trying to make some money. I didn't really know if I wanted income or if I wanted to grow my money. So first of all, know where you're going. I'm here to grow money, right? And my, I need $50,000 and I'm here to grow money. Now, you might be a person, Prince, I'm here to make money. I'm here to get an income. You know, I'm trying to, you know, uh, I received a bunch of money from my parents. That would be kind of weird because I was reaching up under my stance. <laughs> but um, I'm here to, I inherited a half a million dollars from my parents. I don't want to lose it. I'm here to make money. So now you that changes everything when you're looking to grow money. Versus if you are looking just to simply make money. So now know your number. Rule number one, know your number. You need how much money and when do you need it by? Right? Because now you know I can use a CD, I can do whatever I need to do. But now that you know your number, now that you figured out what uh how much time you need to get there, let's get down to the nitty-gritty of particular stocks. Say if you're someone who's looking to grow, like most average people here, they're trying to accumulate wealth. Uh, and they're going to do that. They're looking for stocks I can buy. So first thing I'm going to tell you, when you don't buy stocks, build a portfolio. Build a portfolio first. When I mean by building portfolio, just don't go in here and buy all these random stocks or whatnot. I'm here to build a growth portfolio over a specific period of time. And if that's the case, if I'm here to build a portfolio over a specific period of time, guess what? Um, now I can pick out what I need to do inside that portfolio. I got a growth portfolio. I'm going to tell you, first of all, you need to have an index, whether it's the Dow, the NASDAQ, or the S&P 500, preferably the S&P 500, right? That needs to be about 60% of a growth portfolio because you going in there picking stocks, you probably, you got a, a 8% chance, a 6% chance of beating the market consistently over time. And when you can't beat them, you join them, right? So the well, first thing you're going to do, you're going to turn around, you're going to join them. You know what I mean? So um, first thing we're going to do, is figure out uh, how can we ourselves uh, build a portfolio. So first of all, inside that portfolio, at the bottom, you need to know things. Something that I'm going to buy and hold for. Uh, I'm, not, I'm going to buy and hold forever, meaning that I'm going to buy it. I'm going to hold it forever. I'm never going to sell the stock. Right? That could be you know one stock that I'm going to buy and hold forever is Berkshire Hathaway. Right? I won't say forever, forever, but that's a long term stock that I don't plan on selling anytime soon. So Berkshire Hathaway. So no matter what, you got your long your long stocks. Then you have your middle stocks, the ones that are kind of, you know what? I ride the trend when it's going up and down. That's in the middle. And then at the top, that's your less than 10%. It should be high new phase stocks or whatever the case may be. You know, like a startup or something like that you can put in there. So let's go find out how to uh, buy these particular companies. So the first thing we're going to do, now we're going to get into the steps, what everybody came in here for. Right. And today we're going to use Yahoo Finance. Prince, why are we going to use Yahoo Finance? Because I know it's free. 
and it's open to everybody, right? So simple, you can type in Google, Yahoo Finance. <laughs> simple and easy. So one second, uh, make sure this is gone off my computer. All right. So now let's go ahead and as you guys and girls coming in, tell me where you're from. Tell me where you're uh, tuning in from. And hit the thumbs up button if you like the content and you want to see it to go grow. So now, rule number one, step one. What do you know well? What do you mean by what do you know well? Out there, if you are a nurse, you may know healthcare better than anybody else. What do you know well that you have an edge on other people? If you collect tennis shoes, you may know sneakers better than everybody else. If you know um, real estate, you're a real estate agent, you may know real estate better than everybody else. If you're in the technology space, maybe you work at Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, or whatever, you may know um, the technology space very well. So figure out what, if you're somebody like Prince, I don't know nothing well, I just buy a lot of stuff. Well, you may know the retail industry very well, right? Okay. Okay, we got uh, let's, we got Problem Child, a.k.a. The Truth, tuning in from Chicago. Okay. We got Derek Sun, North Carolina, Chicago in the house. Georgia, okay, that's my hometown. Burke County in the house, okay, got it. So um, anyway, so now number one, what do you know well? If you're in the music industry, you may know the music industry well. If you're in the fashion industry, you may know clothes well. If you're in the retail, so you kind of catch my drift. If you're in the military, you spend a lot of time around the military, you may know defense stocks well. What industry do you know well? Write it down. Or it may be two or three industries. What do what industries that you know so well that you may have a competitive advantage over everybody else? For all my military people out there, a competitive advantage that you have over everybody else is that you know companies like Lockheed Martin, you know companies like Boeing, right? Most military people haven't, I mean, most civilian, non-military affiliated people have never heard of Lockheed Martin, Lockheed Martin, right? So that's a company you may want to start with. So what industry do you know well? or industries that you know well, you know, technology or whatnot. So here we go. So I'm going to share this, share my screen with you, and we're going to walk straight through this. All right? Here we go. So here we are on Yahoo Finance. So upon the Yahoo Finance, we're going to go to, where is it? Where am I trying to get to here? Industries, right? Upon the industries, you got basic materials, you have communication services, energy, financial services, healthcare, you know, all the different industrial. If you're somebody who work in manufacturing, you may know industrial better than everybody else. If you're somebody who's been working at the water plant for 50 years, you may know if you work at Georgia Power or Colorado, whatever it is, a power company for a long time, you may have an upper edge on knowing a particular industry, right? So let's take, for example, uh the technology industry right now my computer's a little slow here because of i'm streaming at the same time i guess but okay technology industry they're going to list this out from the top companies to the bottom so number one what do you know very well number two select the industry that that's in Hey, I work at Apple. I know technology very well. So the first thing you're going to do, we're going to uh, select the technology industry, right? I'm looking at my notes as I go down because I did write this out. So now you're inside your industry. Now here on Yahoo Finance, you have the top companies all the way down to the smaller companies to market capitalization. Here, number one is Apple. Apple, it has the price. It has the price that has changed. It's telling you the volume, how many of the stocks traded. The volume of the last couple of months, the volume is important because this shows you liquidity, how fast you can get in and out of particular shares. The last thing you want to do is buy something that is hard to sell. Like everybody's saying, hey, Prince, I'm buying all these gold coins. But so when the world ends, I'm going to be the person with all the gold. But how are you going to sell that gold? Right. You need a market and you just can't go tell everybody, hey, guys, I got, you know, a million dollars worth of gold in my basement. Let me know if anybody's looking for it. Everybody's going to be like, oh, sure. I know a bunch of people looking for it. So liquidity is very important. So, uh, okay. We got a question here. Born and raised in um, New Orleans, living in the Philippines. Okay, living in the Philippines. 
Max B, that's my guy right there. Max B, what's going on? Max B, um, down in Anoya. Okay. New Orleans. I like they like to say. Hopefully, I ain't saying it wrong, but I think that's New Orleans, right? All right. Assalam alaikum. Oh, assalam alaikum. I'm, <laughs> I sound like I'm crazy. Uh, country music city supported. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Appreciate that. Uh, global work. Films and TV. Appreciate that. All right. So, guys, y'all see how we have here. Um, oh, wait one second. Y'all see how we have here. We're in the technology sector for the people that are just tuning in. Hit the thumbs up button. So, first, we started with what we knew very well that we knew better than everybody else, right? Everybody has that. Then we 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 selected an industry. We decided it was technology. We're looking at the top five companies. The top five companies are Apple, Microsoft. Intel, Cisco, and the Taiwanese, Taiwanese Subconductor Manufacturing Company. I never heard of them, but hey, they're one of the top five technology companies. This is how you discover things. Now you have the top five companies. Now, what is the most important thing about a company you're about to invest in? Now you got to go through their finances, right? So one second here. Where are they? Uh, okay, so we're going to click on Let's say the first company here, we're going to look at Apple. So, boom. They have uh, Apple pulled up. Oh, here it is. Let me just show you guys something else here that Yahoo has. It's pretty cool. So, you got to go back. Let's go back here for a second. We, were in, we went to industries for everybody that's following us, and we went to technology. Inside of the technology industry, we saw Apple. Now, this is what I want to show you guys. This is the result list. This is a heat map view, right? A heat. I'm going to pull up a heat map view here in a second. This is a heat map view. This here tells you, this gives you how big someone is in the company and in the industry. This is the technology industry of stocks, right? They're over here saying to the left, you got Apple, you got Microsoft. These are the big boys. You got Intel, Link, Cisco. So it's telling you how big they are compared to everybody else in this particular industry. So I thought that was pretty cool. And it's comparing how did they perform in the last day. Now, you could you could sit back and say, hey, you can I wanted to do every other day or whatever the case may be. But that's kind of nice way to see how big the industry that you're looking in. Right. So let's go back to Apple. Since it's the number one in the industry that we're looking in. So what's the most important factor? Of anything, we're going to click on financials. Financials are the most important thing when looking to invest. Would you let your friend hold money if you knew he didn't have money? No, right? You need to know how much money does a company make? Is it profitable? Same thing. And when you're looking at investing into a company, you should look at, hey, I'm buying the whole company, right? Looking at, because that's what you're doing. You're buying a piece of the company, so you're looking at buying the whole company. So now you go to financials. Right here, you have three major uh, statements. You got the income statements, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. Balance sheet, cash flow statement, income statement. The income statement is exactly what it says. How much money is coming into the company? This is important to find if the company is profitable or not. So let's say for prime example, here, this is how much money that it says that um, Apple has made in total revenue, $260 billion, right? Um, no million dollars, two hundred sixty million dollars. So we're looking at an annual, the annual report, two hundred sixty million dollars that it made in total revenue, right? So now they had the cost of the revenue; it costs money to make that money. So you're looking at total revenue, and then you're going to go down here. And you're going to look at total operating expenses. So you're going to say, okay, yeah, they made two hundred sixty million dollars, but it's not about how much comes in; it's about how much goes out. So okay, so. Operating expenses, this is how much money they spent. So boom, is this company profitable? You're looking at this company, you're looking at how much money they have right here. $63 million of the money that they uh not operating, but um not after operating loss, net income. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. That's how much money they spent in um operating. So here the money they net. It's just like when we get paid, do we pay attention to the gross or the net? We always pay attention to the net, right? So this is telling you how much money the company made. Then you have a breakdown of how much money had to go out? Take me for example. I sell a particular book. 
$30 may come into the company, right? But with shipping and handling, getting the pages made and printed and getting them shipped out, the book itself and to get it shipped out may cost $20, $25, right? So the gross was $30, but after I had to pay for the book and the shipping and the handling and all that, I'm left with, I'm netting $5 per copy. So that's what my net income is. So this is where you can see if the company is profitable or, or not. And this is another one here that people ought to pay attention to called the ED, the EBIT is right here. This is uh, after, um, ooh, it can't come to my mind right now, after taxes, deductions, and immunity, uh, interest, taxes, deductions, and something else. But anyway, this is the net company, the, the net income. This is what's telling me if this company is profitable. If a company is not profitable, off my list already. Not saying that the company can't make it, but I'm saying uh, one second here. Here we go. He says, but Prince, how do you compare a stock against this industry? I'm glad you asked that, Max B. But um, on Yahoo Finance, inside of E-Trade, if you have E-Trade, you can do that. You can, I might pull up E-Trade later on on the show, Max B. All right. But I use Yahoo Finance because everybody have access to it. Right. But I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want people to feel left out. If I said something that nobody had access to, then it didn't seem that cool. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do, who else we got here? B says silver too. That's that's good. Silver is a good one. BA is so cheap right now. It's a steal. Is it really cheap, or you know, or the the, the price is reflecting? Because just because of the stock price is low doesn't mean it's cheap. The company could be cheap too. Just like when we look at women, right? Just because a lot of them out there don't mean that. Oh, you know, the value is down. No, it could not be. So that's not always a good thing. So income statement. We just looked at that's the income statement. That's the first thing. Now we got the balance sheet, right? The balance sheet is going to tell me how much money is in the bank. How much money does this company have in the bank, right? What is in the bank and what is owed? So right here we see in the bank, according to 2019, they got 48, if I'm reading this correctly, $48 million, right? You know, no, no, $100 million in total cash. $100 million sitting in cash, right? Their total assets, you can see the company's value because you got the total current assets and you can do the total liability as well. So the company's total assets is $338 million. And where are their total liabilities? And their total liabilities is $248 million. So you, right there, you can kind of tell assets minus liabilities is going to give you the work the net worth of the company, just like me. How do you know what my net worth is? You look at all my assets, you subtract all of my liabilities, that's the person's net worth, right? So right here, you can see on the balance sheet how much money is in the bank, how much money is being owed. Uh, you're looking at long-term debt, right? Let's look at liabilities down here. Look at the long-term debt. They got $91 million. Now you got to look at other people in that industry. So this is your balance sheet. This is just looking at somebody's uh, balance sheet to see how well the company's doing. So that's the balance sheet. Cash flow is just that, right? The cash flow is how much money is coming into the company, how much money is going out of the company, right? How much money, you know, research and development, what money is being spent on, how money is coming into the company, uh, how much debt, how much money is being spent to debt, that's what you can look at on the cash flow. So step one, what do you know? Step two, select a sector. Step three, look at the top five people in the industry and compare them. So now you sit down, you're writing notes on who is what, how big is whatever the case may be. Step four, you got to get into the finances, right? Now we're going to say, how can you compare to the industries? I'm not sure exactly can you do that on Yahoo Finance, but we're going to do that here for the show tonight. Hit the thumbs up button as you guys and girls coming in. If you like the, uh, what you call it? Yep. Important. Oh, who knows what YOY is? Don't answer that, Know Your Boy. What is YOY? So you see what Know Your Boy said. The most important part of the balance sheet is the YOY. What is the YOY to everybody out there? B says on Fidelity, you can trade extended hours prints. You can't do that with E-Trade and get liquidity. 
Um, yes, you can. You you can, but you have to request permission to do after hours trade. You're right, Daryl. Year over year, you got that right, Max B. Year over year. So Max B, yes, you can um buy and sell stocks on uh, what you call it. You can't. I mean, you can't buy and sell after hours with E Trade, but you have to request special permission for it. So let's go bit up here. He said, "How do you compare stocks against the industry?" So I'm gonna have to log into E Trade, right? I'm gonna log into my E Trade account. Because I know you can do this with E-Trade. I'm pretty sure you can do it with TD Ameritrade too, but I'm not sure with Yahoo Finance. I was utilizing Yahoo Finance because I know that's what a lot of you guys and girls know. I mean, it's easy for anybody to get to, is what I mean to say. Here we go here. We're going to pull up Apple. All right, I'm pulling up on this other screen. So we're, I'm going to share my uh, screen over here with uh, Apple. All right. Let's go ahead and share this for you. Dun, 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 dun. All right, here we go. Boom. So here we have Apple pulled up on E-Trade. So Apple is up under the technology, computer phones, household electronics industry, right? So we're going to click right there on that hyperlink. And when we click on that hyperlink, it should bring us to their, um, when we stroll down here, Right. So this is the industry. This is the market cap. This is the industry average, industry average, sector average. The industry could be technology, but un under technology. So this is the industry technology and the sector is computers, phones, households and electronics. So the market cap, we can see the average market cap, uh, the average market cap compared to the S&P 500. We can see the P.E. ratio, which is the price to earnings. This is the price book value price sales so you can see the whole industry so here is going to give you right here it says computers and electronic industry when you look at the pe ratio people use this to kind of tell um who's compared to what and you can see if you line them up to the pe ratio you got apple sony hp dell uh panasonic i haven't seen that one in a while and you got the whole industry so if you want to compare them to uh earnings growth you know what are people are people are look at profit margin so who has the strongest um, profit margin? Apple, Sony, HP, Dell. Now you're looking at what the industry is doing. And when you look up the company, you can compare the particular company you're looking at against the P.E. ratio of the industry. Okay, how are they doing in this industry? Are they high or low compared to this industry? They're de de um, because every you can't compare Apple to Ford. Because they're in two different completely industries, two different, different completely sectors, right? So you want to use companies. You take the top people, like, okay, let's compare Apple and Microsoft. Let's see who has the highest growth potential. Let's see who has the great uh, earnings potential. And you can look at it that way. That makes sense to y'all? So that's answering Max B question. He said, but Prince, how do you compare stocks uh, against this industry? That's exactly how you do it, right? And you're right. Everybody said, uh, Daryl said uh, year over year. That's correct. Max B said year over year. That's correct. So here you can see right here where you have it logged in at, this is how you can compare to your particular industry. So now you already know the, the base of a portfolio, I believe, especially if it's a growth portfolio, but it's different for everybody else. But if you have a growth uh, portfolio, your growth portfolio should be a, uh, it should start out the baseline of your growth portfolio should be the S&P 500 index or a, uh, or the Dow Jones or something like that, right? Hold on one second. I forgot to share my feed on my other pages. So here we go. I'm sorry about that, guys and girls. If y'all got any questions, okay, here we go. We got one that come from Blaine Kong. You want to compare, getting feedback. <laughs> Okay, Ben Klong said you uh, you want to compare P.E. ratios, market cap. Look at companies' cash on hands and outstanding debt, right? That is that is correct. What we just spoke about earlier, um, we just spoke about looking at the finances of the company and looking at, because uh, P.E. ratios, I don't really care about the last, P.E. ratios are based off of the last 12 months. I care about future P.E. ratios. I'm going to show you guys this and that, right? So, because I don't care, stocks are brought off of the future, not the past. So y'all agree with you 100%. But this is how you can compare in a particular industry. Another thing is to consider is how companies held up during other crises. 
you know, I'm, it's funny that you brought that up. You know, probably can't do it on this particular show, but I'll do that at another time. But let me share this out real quick. I don't know why I keep getting this. Uh, one second. I'm trying to share this out on my uh, Facebook page. Because I got multiple Facebook pages. All right. So, you're right. How you doing, Miss Ruby? Miss Ruby came in. Tell us where you're from. Tell us where you're from as you come in. Second, sorry about that. Sharing this out, guys, I forgot to uh, put it on my other Facebook pages. Okay. Ruby's coming in from Memphis. Okay, we got Memphis in the house, all over the place. So that's to answer Max B question. He said, hey, Prince, how can I compare against things inside of his industry? This is how you can get to the industry and look at what's going on in that particular industry, right? You want to compare things within that particular industry, how big, who's doing what, and whatever the case may be. You know, so there we go. All right. So here we go. Now that we got that out of the way, what we talked about, we talked about what you, by start with what you know. All right, here we go. We got a question coming in. William Voss. Okay, Sony is dropping the PS4 at the end of the year. And would I buy into Sony or buy into Navita? The equipment is going to be in the PS5. Right. So he said, hey, should I buy, you know, the PS5, the PlayStation 5 is coming out. That's very smart of you to look at uh, what's coming out next. Hey, the PlayStation 5 is getting ready to come out. Um, should I buy the PlayStation 5 or should I buy the Navita, uh, you know, the company that makes the PlayStation 5? Right. Now, the first thing I will look at is you got to look at both companies and see how both companies are managed using the principles I just showed you. They're very basic. We didn't go too deep and dive into it. We went very uh, basic into it, right? We're going to stop sharing for a second. We're going to, we went very basic into it. And the reason why we went very basic into it, because I know this is new to a lot of people. <clears throat> I'll say part two for another time. Now, my belief is both of them sound good, but what else does Navita do? Are they profitable? Am I saying that correctly? Navita, I think I've seen that company a bunch of times. It's a pretty big company. So. I would say look at both companies, analyze both companies, and see what else does that company do. What is the price of each company? Does the company pay a dividend? How much debt do they have on hand? What is their debt to income ratio? What is um what is their debt to income ratio? Is it a profitable company? Have how have their earnings been um been reported? Are their earnings growing? Are their earnings slowing? Are they going backwards? Right? That's what I would do, and that's good. You already know two companies to line up against each other. Now you have a perfect company, Sony and uh, Navita are close to each other. Find out about the companies, learn out about the companies. And the only way you can do that is to look up 10K, which are 10 kilos, some people like to call it, 10K reports, which are annual reports, or 10Q reports, which, which are quarterly reports, which are going to do videos in the future about how to do, right? All right. Know your boy said tech stocks is in the growth sector, but when it comes to yield prints, is it still good to look at energy stocks or that's a lost cause? Energy, I mean, I can't speak too well on energy. I'm not, you know, I'm not a smart guy, but um, uh, I'm not a smart guy, but I'm just smart enough to know what I'm dumb at. And energy stocks is not something that I'm very clean, um, clued in on or know very well. I'm not very familiar with that industry. But if you feel like you know that industry very well, so I just stay away from it. Because it don't matter what industry you go into, whether it is consumer discretionary, whether it's technology, whether it's industrial, if you know what you're doing, you're going to make money either way. 
right? You don't have to be in the high flying stocks or whatnot. If you know something very well and you follow it year after year, you can learn a lot, right? That's my take on that one. All right, Gerald said, hey, Prince, this is GR from Los Angeles. Okay, LA in the house. Brought 10 shares of Microsoft when it was uh, at a low of 156. Well, whole long-term dividend. Yes, I definitely believe in uh, Microsoft in a long-term trillion-dollar company. Um, it was the hottest stock. It was a pretty hot stock last year. It's in my portfolio, and uh, I hated it when it, you know, had these recent uh, outbreaks of, you know, market volatility. But don't look at it every day. I know I got a good company. I know Microsoft is a great company. Um, so I'm not really concerned about it, you know. Yes, the, will the profit slow? Yes. Will, uh, will they be back? Of course. They're a trillion-dollar company. So good on you, Jerry. I'm, I'm with them right now. Oh, he hit a question mark. He says a long term. Yes, I think Microsoft is one of the most sleep on one of the most slept on companies. One hundred and fifty six dollars for a company that got a market cap of like uh, in the trillions. Paul the MAGA, right? <clears throat> you saw it's the number two tech company in the world. All right. B says, oh, my God, thanks. <laughs> and for the people, if you're catching this on Facebook, I think you can comment on Facebook, too. So I haven't seen anybody comment from Facebook, but you can, too, if you are watching on Facebook. Why do you say, oh, my God, thanks, B? Um, B Stealth says, Royal Caribbean took a massive dip. Yes, all of the shipping companies, all the airline companies, that's the industry that I'm starting to look into, um, you know, that's the industry that I'm starting to look into is the um, traveling industries uh, and the travel industries because they took a massive dip because of the whole coronavirus. So it's not, you know, them and all the other vacation spots and airlines. Everybody took a big dip because they stopped taking international flights. They couldn't do flights from China. That hurt a lot. That hurt a lot of people. So now it's the time to say to see if there's some opportunities in that particular industry, starting with the finances. All right. Next question. They will rise again, I believe. Yes, I definitely, they'll be back. Max B says, Prince, how do you decide how much of a stock will be in your portfolio? Well, it depends on how big my portfolio is. If I have a $5,000 portfolio and I'm aggressive in that portfolio for $20,000 portfolio, I look at, that's why I like to break it down to percentage, right? If it's a growth portfolio for the long term, I'm looking at 60% of it, I'm going to, forget about it, throw it into the index and, and kind of forget about it. Then about a good, uh, I mean, that's leaving with 40%, about a good 25 to 30% of that are going to be my middle age where the stocks that I will ride for the good time, I'm not really committed to them long-term, but that 60% would be indexes and stocks I'm going to hold forever. Like it may be a Microsoft, it may be an Apple, Berkshire Hathaway, um, something like that, right? Those are my, I'm not getting rid of these or whatever the case may be. Because when you buy and sell a stock and you got capital gains, it gets kind of convoluted. Next step is in my 30% range, this is my 30%. So let's say if I had a $1,000 portfolio. A $1,000 portfolio, $600 of that is going into long-term growth companies. Companies I'm going to hold probably forever for a long period of time because I know I'm not smart enough to beat the market consistently on a day-to-day -day basis. Then at 30% would be stocks that I can ride for the moment and jump out. If they got cold, maybe like a micro, maybe like an Apple, Apple is a hot stock or a Tesla may rear his head. You may do something like that. That's the technical side. Fundamentally, the 60 percent of my portfolio is going to be fundamental, fundamental growth companies. If I'm trying to grow, then in that 30 percent of my portfolio, that's when I would look to get a little bit more risky. That's when I may look at an SPXL or TQQ leverage bearish ETF, something like that or whatnot. And then a good five to 10 percent of my portfolio would be sitting in cash. And the rest of it, that's when I would kind of buy Uber or Space. Space and Uber are 20, 30 bucks. You know, they're unprofitable, but they have a, uh, they look like they might be in a good industry that can have a long-term effect, right? So that's kind of my portfolio breakdown. That's that 60, I would say it's like a 60, 20, uh, 20, 20. I would say 60% long-term investments that I know I'm, Sometimes you got to realize what you're not good at. Hey, you know what? The likelihood of you buying in here and becoming next Warren Buffett is pretty slim to none. So guess what's, what's going to happen, right? What's going to happen is you're only going to be 
uh, a small piece of the company, right? So, uh, so that would be my sixty percent. Then twenty percent of my portfolio is the middle age, uh, where I can you know ride things. Five percent, a good five, ten percent would be in cash. Other ten percent is into the high flyers, you know, like the Ubers, unprofitable companies that can make a little spice, a little icing on the cake. Okay, from Facebook. Okay, we did get a comment from Facebook. Judy Voss said, lots of good information. Thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Judy. I think that's probably like the first Facebook comment I saw. Great to see that. William Voss, will you apply this strategy to short-term for profit? No. This is more of a growth. Uh, short-term profits, if I was to put short-term profit, it would fall in that 20%. How I say 60% would be long-term, that 20%. This is where if you did your proper research and you knew Sony, you should know Sony and Navita by the back of your hand. I'm giving you guys something deeper. I would say 80 to 90% of regular investors don't even know what a 10 kilo is. They never even looked at the financials of a company. They say simple stuff. Not anything against you, uh, uh, boss, but you said, like, somebody like, oh, they made PlayStation. I'm going to jump into that, which is not a bad thing, but it's like giving somebody your money and you don't know anything about them. You just heard the brand. You don't pull up the finances. You don't see if they're profitable, unprofitable. You don't know anything about them, right? So you have to be able to look up that particular company and say, okay, well, I know Sony. I know Navita. I know something about them. I'm probably going to buy the PlayStation 4. So guess what I'm going to do? Let's peel back the layers of the onions. Let's look at, let's compare the two companies and see who who's carrying the most debt, who's doing better overall financially to a company, right? And don't become intimidated when you look at those financial reports because they are dry and people are like, well, I don't know what it means. Just follow the things that you know what means, right? And if you're comparing what you know about one company to another company and you're predicting for the future, which company is going to predict for a future? If this company has $10 in a bank, another company has $10,000 in a bank, who is going to be able to withstand a downturn? Second of all, how does Sony make his money? How does the Vita make his money? Do they make their money from one place, like China? As soon as the coronavirus breaks down, then the company just goes belly up? How do they make money? Do they have different sources? Where does the money come from? Those are things that are going to take a little deep diving. All right. Next comment here. Daryl says, what is your recommendation if you want to do is make money, cash, off of trading securities? Is that doable? Yes, that is doable, but you, you're sounding like someone, Daryl, who wants to get into day trading. Am I correct on that? You know, most people that come in and say, hey, I just want to make money off of, I want to buy a stock, hold it. I don't care anything about the stock. I just want money. Then you're not a fundamental person. You should be looking into technical data, right? And we know we're going to do, you know, since we got a little time here tonight, we, we might slide over to Yahoo Finance and do a little technical data. You're not a fundamental person. Fundamental person is going to look at the finances, who's going to go up over the long term, all of the good stuff. A day trader, they don't care. All they know is they're going to, get, you know, the charts show them that this company is at Microsoft is at 153 and it has a strong possibility of going down or up. They make their position, they get in, they position, and they get in, they get out. That's a technical person. So, what a technical person will be doing, let me pull it up here on my other stream. I'm going to share my my stream here soon. And we're going to we're going to dissect between what would a technical person do and a fundamental person. Earlier we talked about what a uh technical person would do, right? Now we're going to talk about a we talked about what a fundamental person would do. A fundamental person, someone who sits and looks at the fundamental. Notorious Warren Buffett. He's known for being the fundamental god of looking at companies and looking at their finances and understanding what they mean, right? So let's see, can we pull up the chart here? So now let me share my stream here. He said, thanks for that. So I struggled with that, Daryl, and I'm glad that I was able to help you. I struggled with that for a long time where I was looking at a stock, thinking it was looking at a chart. Ooh, it can go up and ooh, it can go. And then, you know, I wasn't a fundamental person, but then I was a technical person. Then I was a fundamental person. So you have to be, you have to decide which one you're going to be. And then some people, you can marriage both of them, right? Now, here we go. Now, before we get into that, I'm going to share my screen here and show you what a technical person will be looking at, right? And, and uh, here we go. Here we're going to go to our tab. I'm going to share my, okay, so here we go. So now we got Apple here. This is a one-year chart on Yahoo Finance of Apple. So what a technical person would come in, do, 
come and do. They will say, okay, I want to look at the moving average. What is the moving average of this particular company? They may sit back and say, hey, I don't want to look at the last. I want to look at a three-month chart. And I want to look at candlesticks. So they're saying, okay, boom, this is the moving average of such and such. And then they, they will draw, right? Let's say here. Say one year, right? So one year, let's where's my um drawer? They will say, okay, they will look at what they'll look at breakaways. Let's look at three month, just look at the three month chart, right? So a person with a three month chart, they may sit back and draw a line here and look at all the lows. And they can look at all the lows that this company was having, Apple was having, and then they will make a good prediction of, hey, look, it broke through its support line because you have resistance and support. Let's look at uh, what you call this. What's my Bollinger Bonders? Let's put my Bollinger Bonders on. Guys, all this is free, by the way, too. So a person may look at the Bollinger Bonders and they may look at, hey, I want to jump in here. I want to get out. This is what a technical person is looking at. What we did earlier when we was looking at the finances and we was going through the income statements and we was going through the uh, balance sheets and cash flow statements. That's what a fundamental person who's looking for long term. Those are usually the winners. The fundamental long term people are usually the bigger winners. So you have the less 5 percent of people who can day trade. So this is what a day trader is looking at. So the next question we have here. Uh, Daryl said, thanks for that. Appreciate it. This is what a technical person is looking at. Earlier, we was talking about fundamentals. Prince, would you consider day trading? No, not in my personal life. The closest I would get to day trading is buying and selling options. I won't day trade. The reason why I won't day trade, you first of all, you got to have $25,000 in your account, right? Which, you know, you got to have that. So that eliminates a lot of people from day trading. Then second of all, I don't sit at home all day and buy and sell and that's not my thing i'd rather be like my idol my uh my idol warren buffett right I, I like to look at the most successful people at it and see how they did it right <laughs> so that's what i look at no you're like warren buffett he don't play with tech only microsoft and apple because they're easy to say right Next question, Jerry. Love the aspect of looking at charts and moving averages. Candlesticks is fascinating. You're right, Jerry. And you know, um, some people are very good at that. Long term investors look at them. Fundamentals tell you what to buy and what you call it. Thanks for telling me e trade offer after hours trading. Yes, you can trade after hours, but you have to request it. You got to get an account and, you know, you can do pre, pre, they call it pre market and after market trading. On a funny note, love your horn. Oh, that is. <laughs> That is true. It does look like I got horns on my head. That's what. <laughs> so anybody see this is a, I got a, I got a bear. I got a bear behind me, but well, I got a, uh, a bull behind me, and I got a bear behind me. So this is the bear and the bull, and they're playing chess. So they're playing chess. A bear and a bull behind me are playing chess, and that's to simulate uh, the bear market when the market is going down, and the bull market when the market is going up. So that was my little simulation. But that's funny. Yeah, hit the thumbs up button if you like it. But uh, yeah. So yeah, so Warren Buffett is a long-term person. He's not very uh, short-term, right? He looks at company, he breaks down the fundamentals. But a technical person will sit here, they will look at the uh, charts. They will use their bulletin binders, right? They will use, they will try to find out, let's say here, let's go back, let's look at Apple over one year, right? And they will say, okay, well, what made Apple break away? You know what? And they love to use this too. A lot of people. Let's let's take a look here. I make things off this. Sometimes I get technical, but that's just not my uh, all the way thing. Now I got all these lines on here. Oh my goodness! Clear drawing. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Uh, let's go here. Let's bring in a comparison. We're gonna look at no, no. We want to look at the money flow. The money flow index. Okay, so down here, we have the money flow index. So inside the money flow index, we show, this can tell us where the money is flowing, all the in, uh, industry money, is it flowing in or is it flowing out? 
So you can see a decline here when money is flowing out of the, com the company. It's the stock going down when the money is flowing down. You got to now you're looking at the volume. How, what is the volume? Uh, you had a bunch of sellers come this day. You had a bunch of buyers come this day. What was the price move? This is what technical people are looking at. And they're looking at it even deeper. They're looking at the five days. They're looking at what happened in five days, right? Oh, boom. This was a, a major drop. What happened? Then they will draw they will draw lines all over this chart showing when are ways to get out. That's a technical person, right? The best in the world are people who can manage technical and fundamental at the same time. That's great. All right. Gerald said, I know you don't like Robinhood app, but it's very easy to buy stocks with no fees. Just need to transfer my funds ahead before I trade, which kind of sucks. But it's, I can do that with E-Trade, TD Ameritrade. And they have an app as well. They got an app for desktop, all of that. So I don't not saying that I don't like them, but who remember what just happened to Robinhood? Robinhood just went down for, what, two, three days straight or something like that? One or two days or something? Yeah, not saying there's something bad about Robinhood. Robinhood is a a cool app, you know. The the only thing, the only reason why Robinhood is known is because they had no trade fees, and which was great. But then now everybody has no trade fees. Now what can you say? So I can do the same thing with a TD Ameritrade or E Trade or whatever the case may be. Not saying they're bad, but it's just the way it is, right? So let's do a quick recap. The four steps to researching to stocks to buy. Start with what you know. One, what do I know? I know uh, the technology sector very well. Now, what I, I know a lot about technology. I know about, a lot about whatever industry. I know a lot about technology, right? Now you select your sector. Your sector could be, like we just previously stated, technology. You're like, hey, I'm a gamer, and inside of my games, I know a lot about, uh, what you call it? I know a lot about pharmaceuticals, right? Now you break it down, you go to the health industry. Uh, now you start with the companies that you know inside of that industry. Like in this for example, we said we knew a lot about, we was a gamer, we knew a lot about technology. So with that technology, we decided to go into the technology sector. We saw the top two companies were Apple, Microsoft. So you can compare Apple to Microsoft against the industry. What type of debt do they have? What is their debt to income ratio? All that great stuff. Now you got to break in, break down those finances. Look at the income statement. Look at the cash flow statement. Look at the balance sheet. How much the cash flow statement tells me how much money is coming in, how much money going out. The balance sheet is telling me how much money is in the bank. The income statement is telling me how much money is coming in, right? So that's the way I want you guys and girls to uh, look at it. All right, let's see, we got some more. Max B. Yeah, I, uh, she said, should your SPXL or U Pro uh, as a long term play or short term dips? Short term on dips. If you just buy SPXL and just hold it forever, I won't say you will lose, but that's very because they suck when markets get very volatile. If you, especially when you paid attention to the coronavirus that happened, so they're not something you just buy and hold. It's something you buy. You may buy it, then when the market takes a dip, you buy more. Then when the market takes a dip, you buy more. Then the market takes a dip, you you know, you can do it like that. That's what you can do with a UPRO or SPXL. Uh, UPRO and XPXL, those are stocks similar. SPXL and UPRO or UPRO. These are particular companies that are, um, these are companies that do, what, is, what do these companies do? I'm having a blunder here. These are companies that, um, these are leverage ETFs, leverage bullish ETFs, leverage bullish ETFs, meaning that whatever the S&P 500 does, it tries to perform three times higher than that. And what, how it does it, that instrument works is they're buying and selling options on the daily. They're leveraging up every single day. So it's a good thing to take care of, you know, like for prime example with myself, boom, I brought some on Friday when the market was down like 600 points and boom, the market shot up and was down 200 points. But I made about a 7% return before the market closed on Friday. Let's say if Monday we get a nice green pop. We get a nice green pop, boom, I can sell it. So I don't think it's a good long-term holding forever. And the only way you can hold it long-term and play it forever is if you hold it, then buy more as dips come. Buy more as massive dip comes. comes right? 
iBio stockholders were mad over RH down, over Robinhood being down. <laughs> yeah, it's a two dollar stock. Everybody went and brought it, and um, you know, hey, it is what it is. You know, I heard it was a technical glitch because they didn't consider February 29th. Oh, technical glitch because of the massive selling and buying and stuff like that. I mean, welcome to the big leagues. You're in the big leagues now. You got to step it up. It's just like me, right? I, you know, as I grow, you guys and girls out there across the globe that support me over and over in the years and years and stuff like that, I have to become better. I have to know my stuff, right? I have to be able to keep giving you guys and girls information. I have to keep reading. I have to keep becoming better every single day. So it's the same thing when when Robin Hood, you're on the big level. You up there with the E trades and the TD Ameritrades and the Charles Schwabs and the Myrtle Edge and Bank of Americas and Morgan Stanley's. When you're with the big boys, you got to do big boy stuff, right? Once every four years, I don't know. Maybe I. Maybe oh, the leap year. That's what he. Oh, you said they wasn't prepared for February 29th. The leap year. Come on, man. You can't be serious. <laughs> Prince, thanks for the information. Look forward in a few months when I double my money. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. Can I borrow $5? But Elio, anybody out there that want to support me, I know some people uh, like, you know, I'm not a big donation person. What I rather people do is to uh, check out my book series, my children's book series about investing, credit, and insurance. Purchase those books. Don't donate to me. Purchase those books. Don't donate to me. Those are because when you purchase books, when you purchase a product, that's what helped me grow, right? You you guys send me five, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars, whatnot. Appreciate it. Great, it's very greatly uh, appreciated. But I need those numbers to continue to do what I do. Uh, you know, that's what helped me get deals with Barnes and Noble. That's what helped me get celebrities involved. That's what helped me get other companies and corporations. When I can, they don't care. When you're in corporate America, they don't care about. Yeah, everybody loves me. They want you. You got to have numbers. So, purchase a product, right? So I did the work put the money up, put out great products, right? The series has been everywhere. You know what? I'm going to show y'all something special. Because I know it's been, I've been on here for 57 minutes and only the special audience is going to be here. So I'm going to show y'all this real quick. Hey, Wesley! Wesley! I'm going to show you guys something special. All right. Was going to ask you what's the last stock you sold? What position? Ooh, I think it was. Um, I think it was. What was the last stock I sold? Tesla. I think Tesla was the last stock I sold. In Bank of America. Those two. Wesley. Now I hear his little feet coming. Bean Blanc said, why would anyone continue to use Robinhood after having uh, after having it be so unreliable? No, sir, not for me. <laughs> hey, know your boy Prince. Okay. Go up, go get my, um, go in the car, go in my car, and bring me that book in the back seat, the big, the big book. You ain't talking about me. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna talk about you, Wes. No, your boy said Prince, the book series for kids. I'm trying so hard to get my kids to start investing and in good. It's a good thing you're doing for the next generation. Do you have a way I can receive the books here overseas? Yes, these books are everywhere, man. You know, they're hardcover, paperback, ebooks, audio books. Uh any way you can get them. You know, you can download them, you could ship them anywhere across the world. Uh there, if you're in Japan and you're Kusuka on the naval base out there, then the then a uh, library out there. So we in Japan, we have hit overseas. So they're everywhere. You know, if you anywhere you can order them offline, you can get them from Amazon, BarnesandNoble.com, Amazon.com, WesleyLearnsToInvest.com. You know, they're on iTunes, audiobook, ebook, whatever you do. You know, you can get them across the globe. Appreciate your support. When can I get your autograph? When are you coming to the beautiful city of L.A.? L.A. in the house. Okay, L.A., all right. Um, if the demand is there, you know you know what, to be honest with you, Gerald, that's how I do it, right? If I get sales, I'm independent. I'm 110% independent. Yes, 
you guys have seen me do stuff with celebrities. Now, Joe, you got me thinking about this doggone uh, bull behind me. Now it does look like I got horns. So, uh, but yes, but by people supporting me, by me having numbers, that's how I'm able to move across the globe. By me having numbers, that's how I'm able to move across the globe, right? And um, you know, and if I have numbers, then I can go to a Barnes and Noble and say, "Hey, look, Barnes and Noble, I sold this many copies." You know, you gotta have a demand. You gotta have a demand. You got it? Yeah. Is it heavy? No, no, not those. Give me those. The big one. Did you see the big one? Yeah. And it's the it's the in the back seat. It's like this big. Go get that one. Look in the back seat. <laughs> he went and brought me. He think he's funny. He he went and brought me his books. <laughs> huh? No. In the uh, back seat where you sit at, on the floor. That's Wesley, guys. And, you know, the name of my book series for everybody that's out there, that's uh, Wesley Learns to Invest, all of the good stuff. But if you stay, hang around, I'm going to give you guys a special treat about that, too. Problems, child, say, I'm still here, too. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Only the real fans are still here. I'm just soaking up the knowledge. Appreciate it. Supply and demand, just like the market. Yes, you got to have a demand. You can have the supply all you want. You can have whatever your product is, but these stores and these marketing companies and all these other companies, they want to see your ability to sell. Can you sell? Do people support you like that? If you ain't got the numbers, you don't move. The only reason why I've been able to upgrade my YouTube channel, uh, you know, the only reason I've been up, you know, how you guys see me with the green screen update is because I have thousands of people that are tuning in. TD Ameritrade has reached out to me before. E-Trade has reached out to me before. All these other companies, you know, that I've been able to work with in a slight way or whatnot uh, or take attention to me is because of you guys. So if you want to see it, you support it. And when I have the numbers, then I can use the numbers to go do something else. When I go to somebody and say, uh, so Gerald is laughing at me now. Global world is still here. I appreciate it. I'm waiting on my son, Wesley, to bring this. Uh, this is going to be pretty cool. It's a pretty cool treat. I think y'all enjoy. Gerald said, respect your entrepreneurship and independence. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Are you also on eBay and Amazon? Yes, I am. Yes, we're on everywhere. We're on eBay. You know, eBay. I mean, I don't know if we really own eBay. I think those are aftermarket sellers. But yes, we definitely have them. All right. Judy says, you have books for kids. Have you thought about doing books for adults? Yes. Um, I plan on doing two more books in the book series. A book come out every two years. And it's green. Not, not like that one. It's big. You see, go over there. You see the blue one? On the top shelf. No, right? No. I'm pointing, I'm pointing to it. Look at it. Point to it on the shelf. The blue book. The big blue one. You see the big blue one? In the corner? It's just like that in the back seat. No. The big one. You see the, to the right of that. To the right. Go to the right. Yeah. Go to the right. To the right. No, other way. The other right, Wes. Right there. No, on the shelf, Wes. Goodness, I swear. It's go in the back seat on the floor. Look on the floor in the car. Right? In the back seat on the floor. Tell me if you see a book back there. All right. If you can't find it, just let me know. If you can't find it, I have to go get it. But yes. Um, yes, I plan on doing two more books. I'm still active duty military. And I think that um, my last book, uh, I'm, I'm going to do a book next year, a children's book. Then I'm going to do a children's book in 2013, right when I'm retiring from the military, 2023. 20, and then I'm going to go into adult books or children's books. Not adult books, but adults, teenagers, things like that. Ruby said, I'm here. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Ruby. From Memphis. Ashley D says, what type of investments would you suggest graduation for a teen? Um, graduation for a teen, I would say stocks. I, I did it for my uh, nephew. I gave my nephew three shares. No, I think it was like three or four shares of TD Ameritrade. 
I built him a, you know, I got him a TD Ameritrade account. I gave him three shares of Apple as a graduation gift. And he joined the military and he reached out to me one day and said, Hey, uncle, you know, how do I get into my account? Cause I want to put more money into it. Brought a little tear to my eyes and he did, you know, and I want to say the last time I looked at that account, it was like 800, almost to a thousand dollars that cause he was adding money into it. And the TD Ameritrade, not TD Ameritrade, but the Apple, not the Apple, but the AT&T stocks that I brought in one year had returned 20%. So that was nice. You know? Sometimes you have to do it yourself. Yep. You got it, Wes? He say, okay. He said, bling, <laughs> your other right. <laughs> can't find it okay I, I get it he said your other right I'm gonna go up there and get it okay all right y'all give me one second I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna grab this thing to show you guys something that's pretty cool only for because I'm Hi. how you want to tell everybody huh Hi. Hi. you got on a green wait what hmm? this thing I, you got on a green shirt this thing see you okay hmm? maybe another time okay, okay all right I'll be oh, up in a second. Well, well, how's that then? <sighs> or, what, put on a, take that shirt off and put on another shirt. Okay. Then I'll show it to you because you got on a green shirt. This is Wesley, y'all. He's discovering a green string for the first time. And he's the star of a book series titled Wesley Learns. This is Wesley in real life. He's discovering a green string. He's looking so surprised like, Dad, what is that? How, how is that on there? How do you get it? <laughs> Yes, he had about, um, no, he had AT&T. I brought like three or four shares. Now, AT&T didn't grow that high. He added on more money inside of it. You know, when he called me one day. He put 400 bucks in it. He put 1,000 bucks in it. No, he put like a 400 bucks in it or something like that. And um, I gave him some stuff to buy. And, uh, you know, his portfolio is, is growing. So, and it's his now. So, at the graduation, I would, I would award him stocks. AT&T, Coca-Cola, Microsoft. I was starting with large blue chip, blue chip companies. Apple, Microsoft, these are the big boys right now. Very steady found finances. Y'all give me one second. I'm going to go grab this and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. All right, here we go. All So think about it. This is the, this is Warren Buffett's, he's going to bring this out. It's going to be Warren Buffett's latest book called The Permanent Value of Warren Buffett, right? Bill Bob said, watching. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I have my investments with Ally. Do you suggest E-Trade for custodials? 
Um, I never use Ally. If they have a custodian account, I mean, I personally use E-Trade, T Ameritrade, but I haven't heard anything bad about Ally. So, all right. So everybody give us a thumbs up. I'm getting ready to show you guys something. And exclusive. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm going to do something for y'all real quick, too. I never tried this on live, but we're going to try it. All right, here we go. So every two years, Warren Buffett, they put it, they do a book of his life called A Permanent Value, The Story of Warren Buffett. And A Permanent Value, The Story of Warren Buffett, it's a, they update it every two years telling his life story. So in this year's edition of his life story, it's a green book. It's not going to go good on my green screen. So I try to show you the cover, but it's going to look a little janky because it's on the green screen. But I'm going to show you guys and girls the inside of the book. This is the inside of Warren Buffett's book. And as you can see, it features yours truly. He tells the story of our meeting and how we met about my books, all the other good stuff. So I'm in his book story. Story of his, you know, that's Warren Buffett, A Permanent Value. Uh, it's an encyclopedia of his life. And they decided to include me in this year's edition. So it looks a little crazy, but that's the treat for everybody that stayed this late. So, no, your boy, CNBC needs your insight, Prince, because they scare people out of, uh, scare people out there. They need to calm voices to reason. That's what you bring to the table, a side of ease and calm for people who have started to invest. Man, I really appreciate that. But the reason why they do that, know your, know your boy, you know, actually, I don't know you. Do you know uh, Becky Quick from CNBC? Um, I actually had lunch with her and Warren Buffett last year. That was pretty cool. But she's always on CNBC. Like she's the lead anchor. She's the one that always sits down with Buffett. But to be honest with you, people do that stuff for uh, ratings. It would get, you know, it's like a reality show where the highlights are fights. You know, and they got on every day and said, "Oh, this company made five percent. This company made ten percent." Nobody would tune in. You got to be like Jim Cramer, like, oh, my God, buy, 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 sell, sell, sell. This is the worst day we've seen in five years. This is the best day. This is, oh, my God, over this many people, blah, blah, blah. The stock market crashed 2,000 points. Why did this happen? That's what gets people to tune in. They do it for the ratings. I mean, they don't make money by educating people. They make money by ratings, getting people to tune in. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, weapon capitalism, that's business. It's just like what I just told you guys and girls. Y'all like, oh, Prince, you know, I want to support you. I cannot support you. I said, buy a book. Why? Because all they care about is numbers. Are they great books? Yes. World's, the world's first children's book on investing, right? Nobody else out there has done that ever except in 2015 when I wrote the first one in 2015 with Wesley. Then uh, the second book was... Uh, the second book was, you know, credit. Last book was insurance featuring NFL Hall of Famer Terrell Davis. So they make their money by screaming and yelling and getting people riled up. That's how they make their money. That's what get people. He said, oh, yeah, problem child said it. He said, that's a scare tactic for, uh, for politics, I think. Yes, that's how they get people to watch. Thank you. Problem child said, congratulations. Ruby said, nice. Yes. Michael Davis, what's going on? He said, um, Michael Davis said, great stuff, my brother. Yes. And that was pretty cool. That comes out in um, May. He's going to have it at his annual meeting. They're going to sell it. So that was pretty cool. The life and story of Warren Buffett features yours truly. So uh, about our meeting and dinner and lunch and all that good stuff. So, yeah, shout out to Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett, Andy Kilpatrick, and whatnot. Thank you all for the support. But anyway, that's going to conclude our episode uh, that's a treat there for everybody that stayed on um, late or an hour. 
over an hour. Hope y'all took away uh, something from this. Y'all give that's how I know. That's why I started the lives because you guys gave me great response. So I started bringing this stuff in and started to up the technology, up the stuff, and bring a better quality product. So that's how I appreciate you guys and girls. Beef, four dollars to sixteen dollars. Run heavy dollar signal heavy dollar signal heavy dollar sign. Congrats on all banking hard. Fire iron. Beef, are you okay over there? Fourteen dollars. I'm kind of lost with what you just wrote there. <laughs> he said, "My man made the goat book." Yes, that's crazy, right? Uh, Max B was going. Yeah, that was pretty. That was uh pretty cool. You know, they told me a year ago that they were going to do that, but I didn't believe them. <laughs> I didn't. Probably said, so who the hell said I had ADD? <laughs> Boss said, great show, lots. I learned, learned learned a lot. Hey, great, great, you know. And I'm going to do it more. You're going to get more. That was just skimming the surface. You know, it's way more and more and more. But it's like a baby. It's like I can't go there. And you can't give a baby a steak. You know, you got to start them off with applesauce, then move them on to oatmeal and you know slowly like that the next day you know you guys gonna be eating steak and y'all gonna be showing me stuff telling me that i'm dumb that's what buffett did to benjamin graham right graham was good buffett became great the people buffett's understudies are going to become greater right so that's the uh the whole idea but yeah that's a, that's a cool thing um they told me about it last year give y'all the you know uh, when I met with him, his guy was like, hey, Prince, I think you got a very good story. I want to include you in Buffett's next book. And I was like, man, whatever. You know, I, Being around in this game, I've met a lot of celebrities. I've met a lot of people. And people don't do what they say they're going to do. So I wasn't expecting it. And uh, I had the 2018 edition. And then a year later, I came home. It was on my doorstep. And I saw it. And I went through it. brought a little tear to my eyes. Because it's one thing to acknowledge somebody you guys already know the story if you tune into the show i've already told you guys and girls the story of buffett and going to lunch with him and dinner and going to his office and him the books all that type of stuff i told you guys that but uh it's one thing when the other person does it It was like if you was to meet bill gates and y'all was to go out to lunch or something or whatever and then he writes about meeting you <laughs> that's crazy right so that's why i thought it was pretty cool even though I knew the story, I already had the picture and everything like that. But it was crazy to be acknowledged by the GOAT. So now I got to be great. I got to be great. That'll depress me. Like, I don't know what if I don't be great. I'm like, man, what else more do you need? But, uh, but yeah. But, um, yes, yeah, so I bring the senses, uh, you know, those anchors. I met all those people. Not all of them, but I met a good bit of them. From Liz Clayman at Fox Business to Becky Quick at CNBC. Liz has been on the show before. I've met Becky two or three times, you know, uh, you know, just it wasn't no formal form, but we just met two or three times. But that's their job in the media. You guys have seen me on Yahoo Finance and y'all see me on TV and radio. That's what they do. Financial shows, they're, you know, they don't make money by saying, hey, guys, talking about P.E. ratios and talking about debt to income ratios. And, you know, they make money by shock value. Right. Shock value. That's what they make them by. Golden Cross Movement Averaging Back Testing Data. Yeah, that's the technical data he's talking about. Beef, Becky is hot. <laughs> but anyway, happy investing. I appreciate it. Thank y'all for taking y'all Saturday night out to uh, tune in with me. I'm going to get into my latest book that I told y'all about. This is uh, Warren Buffett's. Uh, this was written by Mary Buffett. This is Warren Buffett's book on interpretations of financial data. This is my latest one. So I'm going to dive into this and take some notes for the rest of the night. I'm lazy like that. You know, I'm 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 not, you know. Why would you put on another green shirt? Turn that shirt inside out. Wesley's never seen a green screen before. He never seen me on a green screen. So he wants to wear a green shirt. But we're gonna let him uh hurry up. All right, come on. Hi. You got to sit in the microphone. Hi. Hi, people. Thank right. you. Okay, okay, oh, all right, okay, all right, okay, Wesley. Goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Wesley. 
Wesley Dykes. No, you said keep doing Prince A1 schooling, right? A1 schooling. Uh, okay, appreciate it. No, I don't. Oh, uh, that's the guy from Revolt TV, B. The Consulo Mac. Is he from Revolt TV? I haven't heard from him. Michael Mack said, I'm late. You can hit the playback button. S. Ann said, hi, how you doing? S. Ann. Oh, she's probably talking about Wesley. when he... <laughs> Yeah, everybody's talking about Wesley. Yeah, everybody's saying, hey, Wesley, <laughs> just got in. No problem. Y'all going to better get the big playback. You know, of course, we've been on here. We talked about the four steps. We went through Yahoo Finance. We went through E-Trade to compare the industries. We spoke about some good stuff. We talked about a cool milestone of mine with Mr. Warren Buffett himself. Uh, anybody out there that want to support anything that I'm doing, don't donate to me. You know, I'm not a charity case. I'm okay. I would rather you support the hard work that I put out there already, right? How you can support that? By tuning in like you're doing now. Follow us on the Instagram, Facebook, the podcast, and purchasing the books, the book series. Get all three of them. One, two, three. All three of them, you know. But you get all three of them. That's a better way to support all one or ebook or audio book. That's what you need to do. She said, I would love to breathe the same air as Warren Buffett. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna put that up she's she's a ruby said i would love to breathe the same air as warren buffett he said rl ruby i'll do it one more time this is for the people that are coming in thinking like okay what's going on this was uh so warren buffett's latest book this is an encyclopedia on warren buffett's life coming out in may it's a green book. That's why it's showing up like that. But yours truly is featured in it. You can see me and Wesley in there. But he talks about uh, he talks about meeting us and um, he he talks about our meeting him. You know how I met him, him, his wife, going into his office, getting a tour of his office, and going to dinner in the book series that I wrote. He endorsed all of the books. He signed them all, wrote letters to me and Wesley in every book. And I'm actually going to be doing a book signing at his annual meeting on May 3rd. So his annual meeting is at May 2nd. I'll be in Omaha. Then on May 3rd. Uh, yes, I'm in the book too. One, two, three. Yep. <laughs> all three of them. All... <laughs> Thanks to you. Hey, see you. Uh, yes, my schedule, guys. I'm going to be uh, next week. I'm going to be in Burke County Middle School on March 16th, Monday, March 16th. Then I'm going to be at the Innovation Academy on March 17th. Then I'm going to be in D.C. on the 7th and the 8th. Then I'm going to be at a Boys and Girls Club here in Aurora in Denver on the 17th. Then I'm going to be at an elementary school, Perry something elementary school on April 30th. And then on May 1st, I will be at a uh, Boys and Girls Club in Omaha. And then on that sad Saturday, I'll be at Berkshire. That Sunday, I have a book signing at uh, the Bookworm Omaha. Then on May 18th to 17th or something like that, I'll be at South Middle School here in Denver. And then I'll be <laughs> then I'll be back in Georgia to uh, for my wife's graduation. She's earned her MBA in healthcare. So I'll be at her commencement on in June. And then I'll be in the lab working on book four to come out 2021. So appreciate it. Yes, I am in the book too. She wrote, she said, wow, okay, cool. You're in, I think she meant the, I'm in the book too. Yes, I am in the book. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool, right? Of the GOAT, it'll be out in May. It's an encyclopedia on his life. They updated every two years, and they thought that uh, I was, I guess I kind of made the cool list a little bit. So I'm honored to be in his bookstore, honored to meet Mr. Buffett, and not only meet him to uh, conversate with him and um, have him tell me I'm doing a good job to, you know, write letters to, you know, take the whole book series. He wanted the book, so he pretty much got his books delivered to his desk. <laughs> 
So, but yeah, and that's my idol, especially in the in the investing world. Not because he has a lot of money, not because he's super rich, but I like his humility. When we went to dinner. I thought we was gonna go to some ten star restaurant, but we didn't. We went to a little. Uh, it was like a, a little decent restaurant or whatnot. You know, nothing. You know, we had a security guard there, but um, very cool guy. Very, you know, uh, regular car, regular person small office nothing crazy that's what i love about him the most the humility and he's the greatest to ever do it in my industry and it just takes it to another level to say hey uh, for him to acknowledge you your existence so i thought that was pretty cool but uh anyway that's going to conclude today's episode it's been a long episode but i stay here as long as you guys and girls stay here but i gotta get out of here i got some reading and study to do that's what i do now on my uh, spare time because i'm going to be the greatest in the world at it in order to be the greatest, you got to study from the greatest and you got to beat the greatest. All right. So hopefully y'all learned something from that. For the people who are just catching on, um, you're going to catch the playback. We talked about the four steps and we walked through uh, Yahoo Finance. We looked at everything. Ashley D. I'm in Georgia. I'm not far away from Fort Benning. Do I know you, Ashley? I know S N um S oh she said good night, brother. Fort Benning, Georgia. I don't yeah, I'm I'll be in Waynesboro, Augusta area. So but anyway, I want to thank all you guys and girls for tuning in tonight. Uh I appreciate everything. Uh, like I said, hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button, tell a friend, tell a uh tell a friend, tell a pal to tune in. I need to go get a haircut. I get a haircut maybe tomorrow on Monday. Okay, CJ Hansaw, love what you do. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else you see me do crazy around the globe, my name is Prince Dykes. That was Wesley that y'all saw. Grab your, the, the Father Son Financial Literacy Series, Wesley Learns, available everywhere, hardcover, ebooks, or whatever the case may be. And um, until the next time, peace, be safe. I'm out. Thank you.